Hi everyone, my name is Nozibele Kamganamayaba and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, so today I wanted to share my own experience traveling overseas and being HIV positive. The inspiration behind this video um, was because of a number of conversations that I had um, with people that reached out to me, um, particularly they wanted to go overseas um, on holiday and they've been postponing these trips because they're afraid that um, you know the authorities will find air, their air IVs in their bags. Um, there was another person that reached out recently I shared an opportunity um, to attend the World Youth Forum in Egypt. Um, so this particular person reached out and said she has been delaying going on fellowships um, you know overseas because she was HIV positive and she wasn't really getting um, so much information on the internet in terms of what countries accept HIV positive people um, what are some of the things you know um, or the the procedure you should be following um, so she was also afraid that um, if she entered a country not knowing all that information and they find her ARVs she will be chased out of the country so I thought to myself, let me share my own experience um, in traveling and um, what I've learned, what you should be looking out for, um, and what are some of the procedures um, that um, you should follow. Um, so I started traveling um, after I'd been diagnosed HIV positive. The first trip I did was um, a trip to London and in New York, and this was uh, May and June of 2014. I had recently joined an international NGO. Um, we were based in Port Elizabeth, but we had two fundraising offices in London and New York. And every year we will have fundraising events. So I was assigned as the external relations manager to take um, either one of the beneficiaries to go and speak at the event, or I myself would have to speak at the event and talk about the, some of the work that we do back in Port Elizabeth. All in an aim, you know, to fundraise um, enough money to go back home and carry out the work that we do. So I obviously hadn't told my employer that I was HIV positive because one, um, it, it wouldn't have obviously affect my job so I didn't see any reason why I should be telling them. But when the international trip um, start, opportunity started to happen, that's when I was quite afraid in terms of one, should I tell them and two, um, will I be able to travel? So I reached out to a travel agent that was assisting me in terms of my visa. And I must also um, add, um, I was particularly more afraid of going to the US because I had read for many years, um, up until I think the early 2000s, um, the US had not been accepting HIV positive people in their country. Um, so that, that I was really, really scared of that. I was really concerned about it. So I reached out to a travel agent and asked them, you know, what is the procedure um, for traveling overseas? I'm not sure whether she was shocked because obviously I told her that I was HIV, um, you know, positive. I'm not sure whether she was shocked that I was HIV positive. She literally um, immediately shut me down. No, I won't be able to assist you. You won't be able to be part of our, you know, um, our programs. And this travel agent also caters for or specializes um, for people, you know, um, students that want to teach overseas, particularly in China um, and also actually in the US. So I was like, no, you're not hearing me. I am asking like to visit for a couple of weeks overseas. What is the procedure for that? Um, I'm HIV positive. Um, can I travel to the US? Can I travel to the UK? So eventually, after a lot of back and forth, trying to make her understand um, what I was saying, um, she did explain um, as follows. So traveling um, overseas is not a problem for HIV positive people. Um, so when you obviously go through the process of applying for a visa, there's a questionnaire that um, you fill out. That questionnaire um, includes, you know, contact information. Um, are you a citizen of that country? What type of visa are you requiring to to Landuga to visit that country? Um, obviously, for me, I would I would I, I had ticked that um, I wanted a a, a tourist visa, and okay? um, and how much money do you have? Um, who's sponsoring the trip? How long are you going to stay there? Where are you going to stay there? At no any point did they ask me if I was HIV positive or negative. They didn't ask me any medical um, information. And that's what the travel agent explained. And if you are staying in a country um, less than six months, 
and um, it, it's not an issue um, for you as an HIV positive person to travel overseas. So I filled out all my Lantuka, all my um, visa re um, um, requests. Um, I filled out all my information. I went um, the, the the UK embassy in Port Elizabeth was actually the, um, um, by Greenacre Mall, um, and then for 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 the US one, I needed to travel to Cape Town. And still, there was no issue. Um, I handed over my documents. Um, they asked me again why I was going there. I was going to fundraise for an NGO that I was part of. They were more interested in the NGO than um, me particularly. Um, and in a few, in a few weeks, um, it takes about fifteen working days. But it becomes quick depending on the embassy. I received my documents within a few weeks and I was able to travel the UK and the US with no issues. Um, so that was 2014. The same thing happened in 2015. I didn't need to do the same process um, for the US because when I obtained my visa, I obtained my visa for 10 years. So I can go in and out of the country as, as much as I want um, for, for, for 10 years until obviously until the visa um, has expired. Um, because I didn't choose that option um, for the UK, it was it was a bit expensive. So I needed to renew uh, my my visa um, every year because it was only valid for six months. In 2015, there was an opportunity to also to go to Norway. Went to the Norwegian um, consulate, went to the Norwegian embassy, applied for my visa, never had been asked. Um, I was only asked how long am I staying there, never had been asked um, about my HIV status or my medical condition. Um, 2016, I, no, 27, so 20, 2017, 2016, sorry, um, I traveled again in, in the US and the UK, no hassles. 2017, I traveled again the US and the UK, but also I added Belize. Um, I was attending the World Youth um, Conference in Belize. Also no travel, uh, no travel there. Um, and also because I didn't require any visa to actually travel to Belize. So there was not even an issue to go that route. Um, 2018, um, I traveled um, um, to Egypt. There was no trouble also whatsoever to go to Egypt. Um, I was asked only to go to the embassy, obtain my visa, same procedure as any other visa, and that was it. However, I remember when, um, because I also obviously had a further conversation and I did my research uh, and I, was, I, um, I had a lot of help um, from the travel agent. However, when you are going to stay in a country for a longer period, for example, um, the students and the number of people that are teaching overseas, particularly in China, the Middle East, um, and also in the US, because they are part of that program and they stay longer, before they, 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 do, <clears throat> excuse me, they arrive in the country, there are certain procedures they have to follow. And one of those procedures is to fill up uh, or fill a um, uh, complete uh, medical um, examination. But with that medical examination, that also includes an HIV test. If it is discovered that that person is HIV positive, unfortunately, that person will not be part of the program. So the only difference there is, is when you're staying longer in a country, when you are going to, let's say, relocate in that particular country, then it may be required. And this also um, varies from one um, country to the next. There are other countries that do not require a medical um, um, examination, but I know for sure, particularly for those students that are part of the teaching programs, um, teaching overseas, they are required to, to fill out a medical aid, I'm sorry, a medical examination, and that includes an HIV um, test. And as I said, if they test positive, then unfortunately they, they cannot be part of the program. So those are some of the dynamics that you have to um, be aware of and, um, when you are traveling overseas and being HIV positive. Um, if you're staying short a shorter period, you can go on conferences, you can go on your holiday, Day. I am going to Egypt. Thank you very much. Um, I meet at the beginning of December and I, there was no medical um, examination that I have to fill out. I'm going to the World Youth Conference and I am going to have a lovely time. And my husband and I just recently came back from Thailand. No issues there whatsoever. We spent a week there. So what I'm trying to say with all of this, um, there are no restrictions for you to, to travel 
um, go on holiday, go on conferences um, if you're HIV positive. Um, obviously, if you're staying longer, just make sure you research the country um, and see what they particularly say when it comes to um, being, being HIV positive and staying for a longer period of time. So I really hope this has helped, but if you have more information, um, I am available on social media. On Facebook, it's Nozibele Mayaba. Um, on Instagram, it's at um, And reach out to me, inbox me, send me messages. Um, and I'll see you next time when we take on another topic. Thank you so much.